thanks for joining me here again today at Rewritten Vintage Homestead. And it's really starting to get cold here in the Midwest. Uh, I worked all day yesterday getting things done outside. I put my ceramic pots and my decorative things away. My lawn furniture, all of that I've put away. And um, my jack-o'-lanterns that I got for Halloween, those have all been cut up. I roasted some of the seeds and some of them uh, we're saving to plant next year. And so since it's too cold to do anything really outside today, I've been working on things inside. So I'm making uh, pumpkin butter and I've pureed pumpkin for the freezer so that I can make bread and rolls and soup. Um, I'm going to make banana chocolate chip muffins and that recipe was in another video of mine. So I'll link that below. Um, I'm making Italian beef for dinner. I'm going to work on a quilt this evening. So when it's too cold or it's too late in the year for the garden, um, that doesn't mean your homesteading um, goals stop. There's still things that you can do. Now, our last video, we talked about what is homesteading, and that was really interesting. I had some uh, some people stop me after that and, and give some comments. Some people seem to think that the Homestead Act was a racist um, gesture on the part of Abraham Lincoln uh, for taking land away from the Native Americans. Um, and so they don't like to use the word homesteading. They like to use farming. Um, I don't have a problem with the word homestead or homesteading. Um, if you put things in the context of history the way it was, uh, yes, it was, uh, it was very sad that people had their land taken away from them. But you have to remember the Native Americans didn't feel like they owned the land. They didn't feel like anybody could own the land. Uh, but they felt like they wanted to be able to hunt and to live and to do what they wanted, where they wanted, without boundaries. So there's a little bit of a difference there. And yes, it was still sad that they kept getting pushed further and further and further out of where they were comfortable. Um, but you have to remember the Homestead Act, while it was detrimental to one race, it was very beneficial to another. Uh, the African-American uh, community that were newly freed slaves, they were included in that act, and they were able to go west as well if they would, if they would work the land uh, for five years. So it's always important to keep history in its context so that you can understand it better um, and so that you don't make your judgments today based on something that happened a 100 years years ago. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in, but if you're a homesteader like me and you don't mind using the word, um, then part two of our series is going to be about um, should you. And there's a lot of things to think about there. So a lot of people, when they think of homesteading, they think I have to go out, I have to buy acreage, um, I have to have a big farm. I have to buy all kinds of machinery. I have to get livestock. I have to get chickens. I have to do all of these things, which as we talked about before, you really don't have to do. Um, and these are all things that you want to think about. So the first thing is, what are your goals? Now, in my last video, we talked about why people did it. Um, some people do it because they don't like what uh, the school system is teaching their children. So they want to teach them the old ways of learning how to be more self-sufficient and less uh, reliant on the government. Some people want to make an extra income. They want to live off the land. Uh, they want to make money. They want to get away from society. Everybody has a different reason why. Um, me, I don't think it's any more complicated than I just love being outdoors. I love getting my hands in the dirt. I love watching things grow. I love uh, taking something that I've grown myself and making something out of it. I love homemaking and I, I always have. So it's really not a complicated reason for me. Um, so you want to think about your goals. What are your goals? Um, 
if they don't involve devoting a lot of time to your home and to the property where you live, or if you live in an apartment or if you live in a mobile home, in a mobile home community, and you don't have that type of property, um, you need to ask yourself, do I want to spend my time making things from scratch? Do I want to spend my time foraging for food, um, going to garage sales, going to yard sales, going to flea markets and things like that to buy the things they need? Or am I already busy enough with what I have going in my life now? So ask yourself that. How do you feel about it? Um, the second thing was, are you working outside of the home like I am? So if you're working outside of the home like I am, you have to use your time wisely. So I have so many goals. You know, I want to can this and I want to freeze that and I want to make this and I want to paint that and repair this and build that. Well, I only have so much time, which is usually after five o'clock or on weekends. So you need to ask yourself, do I have time for all of that? Um, and if I do have time, is that how I want to spend my time? Do I value it that much that that's what I want to do? You may find your values are different and you don't want to do that. It's too much work. You don't want to spend your evenings and your weekends doing more work when you've just gotten off work. But for someone like me, it's fun. It's not work. It's a, it's a hobby. Uh, so everything you do on your homestead is going to have to be done after work hours. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to build it up so that by the time I retire, which will be in about five years, um, I'll have the homestead pretty well self-sufficient. I'll have my chickens. I'll have several gardens. I'll be making money off of those gardens throughout the, the uh, summer months. Um, I'll have food put away that'll save me money. My vehicles will be paid for. Um, my bills, everything like that will be paid for. So I'm working towards the goal of when I can homestead full-time. So ask yourself if you have a job, is it something that I want to do? Um, another thing is, is your homestead close to where you work? Do you want to drive um, an hour here and an hour there? That takes off more time that you get to spend at your homestead doing the things that you love. You might want to consider either finding another job closer to the homestead or finding a homestead closer to the job. So that's another thing to think of as well. You have to think about the weather um, and you have to think about your location uh, in relation to where you work. Okay. If you've decided uh, this is the kind of life you want, you move out to the country or you move out to the suburbs, how are you keeping yourself safe? Do you know how to protect yourself? Doesn't mean you have to have a gun. Um, do you have uh, lights that if someone pulls up, you know they're there? Do you have an alarm that goes off? Uh, if someone rings your doorbell, uh, do you know any kind of self-defense? Do you have good locks on your doors? Do you have cameras outside? Uh, the hunting cameras are fairly cheap. You can put those outside on your trees. You can see who's coming and going. Do you know your neighbors? Do you know who your neighbors are? Um, there's all kinds of things you can do to search for people who live around you to make sure you're not living next to someone who's dangerous um, or someone who might be harmful to children. So make sure that you do that as well before you make any move, whether it be in town, out in the country, uh, in the suburbs, no matter where you go. Find out who your neighbor, neighbors are to keep yourself safe and check those locks, check those windows, put a camera outside, put some lights outside and just take care of yourself. Um, what are your resources? If you live in a mobile home park, if you live in an apartment, what are your resources? If you need water, where do you go? If you need wood, where would you go? If you need mulch, who can you get it from? Um, how can you garden if you don't have a yard? Do you have a friend who has one? Do you have a family member who wouldn't mind if you put out a few things? Do you have the pots you need if you're going to be doing, the, doing it on your patio or your back porch? Um, 
you need to look at your resources. If you do make the move out in the country, what are your resources? Do you have places you can go foraging? That's the same for the people that live in town. Um, are there places that give away things for free, such as extra food that they're going to throw out somewhere that you can use? Uh, do you have access to water? Will you have to dig a pump? Um, do you have access to wood? Do you have access to mulch? The same things. Um, you don't want to go out so far that you can't get the water you need for your animals or you can't get, you. there's no place for shelter, no place to get out of the sun. Um, so when you're thinking on, on the country level of things, there's a lot more to think about than when you're in town. But also when you're in town, what happens to you if your power goes out? Same with the country. What happens to you if something happens to the water grid? Are you prepared? So no matter where you live, that's why homesteading can be done anywhere. No matter where you live, you have to be prepared. Have a backup system for your power and have water stored away. Even if you live in a mobile home or you live in an apartment or with someone else, there's always room to put uh, extra water under a bed, uh, put extra water in a freezer, um, and find places that you can store what you're going to need to get you through the hard times. Okay. The next one is, can you physically do it? If you decide to make the big move out in the country with the animals and the, and the yard work and the gardens, can you do it? Can you do it without help? Because it's really not fair to expect other people to take care of you, such as your children. So you want to make sure that you keep it small enough and manageable enough that you're able to do it by yourself. That's what self-sufficiency is about. And I'll be honest with you, I've had to ask myself this hard question as well uh, because of the extra weight that I have. I didn't have any problem gardening this year. Um, I, like my husband says, every time he looks outside, I'm on my hands and knees out in the dirt. But can I do that in three years? I don't know. Can I do it in five years? I don't know. Not if I don't keep myself healthy. So I'm going to have to watch my weight and get more serious about that. Um, and that's something, no matter where you live, you need to ask yourself. Can I reach the goals I want at the physical abilities with the physical abilities I have now? And if not, is there anything I can do to improve my health? Those are real important things. Um, and self-sufficiency means doing it yourself. It's great when you have help from your family, from your spouse, from neighbors. Uh, but sometimes, you know, everyone has their own lives. So you have to figure out a way to do it for yourself. If you have to, okay? Do you have the ability to think ahead? Are you a big picture thinker? Um, for example, in July, I was busy doing potatoes, putting away my food, making soups, making stews, and putting all those things in the freezer. Um, I was also looking for alternative sources of heat, alternative sources of cooking, should the power go out. Um, so you're always looking ahead. You're stocking that pantry. You're saving money. You're thinking about the future, and it never, ever stops. So is that something you want to worry yourself with? Some people think it's more uh, fear mongering. So maybe it's not your thing. But if you like being prepared, if you like planning, if you like working on a budget and thinking about what's to come, this is life for you. If you like to live more in the moment and by the seat of your pants, uh, you may not do you may not do very well. So that's another question you want to ask yourself. Do you like to um, go to grad sales and find inexpensive items? Do you like to go to flea markets? Or do you find those things embarrassing? Um, do you like to go to auctions? Um, would you take something free if somebody gave it to you? Or do you think that's embarrassing? Um, some people think... Those kinds of things are 
uh, I don't want to say beneath them, but embarrassing. And so if your pride is something that would keep you from trying to get inexpensive or free resources, this isn't the life for you. Because that is what homesteading is all about, believe me. It's about saving money and how you can cut back where you can. I've already uh, started. I spent all summer making jams and jellies and and uh, buying little dollar store wooden spoons and things like that. Uh, so I can make really nice gift baskets for my coworkers and some of my friends. Um, I made labels uh, for my rewritten vintage homestead to put on the top. And, you know, have you thought about Christmas? Um, have you thought about how you're going to give your friends, your coworkers and things like that, little mementos to let them know that you care about them without breaking the bank? That's what I'm talking about. Do you have the ability to look ahead? So those are the things that I came up with, you guys. It is a lot of work. And it's like I said before, it's like you go to work and then you come home and you work. And on weekends you work. And you have to decide, is this something you want to do? Or would you rather keep eating out? Would you rather... Keep hiring someone to do that work for you. Um, and some people, some people would. You know, I don't have time for it. I want to do something that I enjoy. I want to go to the movies. I want to go uh, to a play. I want to do more creative things. I just want to sleep all day, you know, on Sundays or whatever. And that's, everyone's entitled to their own lifestyle, whatever you enjoy. But if you're thinking about this, remember that. It's something that never stops. The work always is going on, even when the snow is up to your knees, <laughs> which is going to be shortly. So I hope you guys will join me as I do my cozy little things today inside the house. I hope you're getting ready for the cold weather and for the holidays. Thinking about inexpensive things that you can do. Um, don't forget to put plastic over your windows. Let's start insulating no matter where we live. Um, your air conditioner, get that covered. Uh, let's try to make that last as long as it as long as it can. Even if you live in an apartment, you want to put some plastic or something around your windows to keep your heating bill down. They're saying that heating costs are going to go up 50% uh, this winter. I know. <laughs> so you guys, hope you have a great week. Thanks for joining me. Part three will be about if you've decided... This is what you want to do. How do you start? You walk my road with your shoes on your feet. Probably feel the way I do. Live my life from day to day. Probably say, Lord, why me? Work these hands to bleed. Cause I got my Please.
in my part, I played by your rules. Never got my shirt, I never got my shoes. 